up guys, Elliot here from Venom Films coming at you with a, another tutorial. I feel like I say the same introduction every time. I think I need to get a new one next time. Anyway, as I was saying, in today's video I'm going to be showing you, if you haven't guessed by the title, how to 3D motion track in Blender. And this is going to, so you can add 3D objects into your scene. And I just realised the red battery is flashing. Also, I'll leave a link in the description to the new YouTube share thing, so if you want to add me on that, I don't really know how it works, but yeah. I'm going to go quickly now, so let's get on to the tutorial. Okay, so once you are in Blender, you'll be greeted by this cool picture. Now, mine is on Blender 2.78c, and you can update that by going to the website. Now, to get rid of this kind of cool picture, I'm just going to click off to the side. And now you'll notice we have our scene. So the scene consists of a camera, which is what the viewer will see when it's rendered, a light for lighting it and this cube. And to rotate around the scene, you just use the scrolling button on your mouse and you can move all the way around. And you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner here, it's got the orientation so you can see which way it is. Now to start off with, we won't be needing this feature, we're we'll just going down to this bottom one, and instead of 3D mute, 3D view mode, sorry, we're going to do the movie clip editor. Now once you've got the movie clip editor, we're just going to click this open button and it's going to find the footage that we need. So mine's in here. I'm going to open the footage. Now you notice now we have this footage, we have it in our scene like so. Now you notice mine cuts out a bit there, so I don't want that bit. So I'm going to end it where I want it to end. So I want mine footage to end about there. So you'll see here we've got the frame we're on, or there, it doesn't matter which one you've got. So I'm on 168. So I'm going down to the end, and I'm going to change that to a 168. So now we've shortened this down so it ends there. Now it's important here, you go back to frame 1, otherwise it will confuse all the tracking and it won't be as good. So once we've done that, so we're going to add some tracking points for the camp Blender to track. So we're going to do that by going to this Detect Features. And now what this does is picks out high contrast points, which it thinks will be good for tracking. So once you've added this in, we're just going to go down to this tracking button and press play. And this is going to go through all the footage and follow those high contrast points. And you notice already that some points are being lost. So you see this red square here and this one and that one. That is because it's either the tracking quality of that track isn't good, so it's lost it, but all the camera movements too quick or it's too blurry. So that's one of the things to consider when you're filming your film. You need to make sure you have a high shutter speed so you don't have any blurry motion so you don't so it's much easier for Blender to track in the footage. Okay, so once you've tracked your footage and you've got all these little points, you're going to click on all these red ones, right click, hold shift and click on them all and delete these. I'm just gonna go around and delete these as these do not help at all as they don't serve a job and it just makes things not messy. So I'm just gonna go around, delete all these. So I think that's all of them as we have delete. Yes, and it's deleted them all. And now we have some good solid tracking points. So once you've got these tracking points, you're gonna go down to this left side solve and solve camera motion. Now what this does is works out the camera and how it moves. And then we're going to go down and select three points by also right clicking and holding shift. So we want to be the floor. And I'm just going to set an origin. So I'm going to set that as the origin. And then we're going to go down a bit further to scene setup and set that as the background and set up as the tracking scene. And now what I'm going to do is go back to the 3D view. And now we have this, the camera moving around, how it would have done when you were filming it, which I think is pretty cool. And I always have all these, and these here are the tracking points. And Blender have also worked out the depth of the field that it thinks it is. So before we get on with the rest of this bit of the video, I'm just gonna go down to this plus side, go down to the background image, drop that down, add an image, and add the image as a movie clip. And what that does, if you press zero on the numpad, it's added the movie into the background, which looks cool. Now I'll notice in my scene, I have the plane, which is the floor and the cube here. So to get rid of this plane, we're just gonna right click and delete that. So now we have our cube. And once we've got our cube, I'm just going to position that 
where I want it to be in the scene. Now this doesn't matter too much as this is just to demonstrate your 3D tracking. But make it look realistic. So I think that looks pretty cool. Okay, so once you've done that, we are going to now render this out. Now rendering on Blender is a bit different to any other software, so I'm just going to explain that. So we're going to drag this across this right hand panel. And you'll notice we have the resolutions here and then the quality. So I'm going to turn the quality up to 100%. We want it on 24 frames per second as it renders it out the quickest. And then you notice it says as a PG, PNG sequence. We're just going to render out lots of photos. We don't want that, so we want to have it as H264 and go down to the encoding and choose a format that we want. Now it doesn't really matter what format you choose, but I'm going to choose a MOV QuickTime file. If you're going to put these into Blender afterwards, I suggest you don't use an AVI as Blender doesn't support these, however the Pro version does. Okay, so once you have done that, we're going to go back up to the animation and we're going to click on, re this will now render out the animation, where we want the file to go. So we're going down to this output and we're going to go to the, wherever you want it to be saved to and call it something, I don't know, 3, oh, 3D, oh. Not going to happen today. 3D tracking like a. Uh, oh, can't spell. Tracking like a uh, boss. Wizards. Accept that and click animate. Oh, now what we're going to see now is Blender rendering it out every frame. Now this takes quite a long time as we've got 168 frames, but this could take not be too bad as it's not very hard on the computer. However, if you've got lots of different elements in your scene, textures and lighting, it can take hours to do a, I don't know, two second shot. So I'm just going to let that run through the render and then we are done. So there we go, we have finished our, but now we have a box 3D motion track into your scene. Now I will be doing another tutorial hopefully soon of a fully CGI VFX so you can add a, like a spaceship or something into your scene which will look really good. And I'll add shading and all the other cool stuff it makes that fit into the scene better. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe for more, and yeah, Keep up, keep up the support with these videos, I'm absolutely loving them. I also get this comment from Epic Animations saying do more VFX tutorials. So let me know in the comment section what VFX tutorials you want to see. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, bye!